UFC Vegas 96, Jarrett Cannonier versus Kyle Borjalio just ended. And this is going to be my full card post fight. I'm going to go through every single fight on the card and give you my thoughts on them. I'm going to break down every single fight. This fight card was amazing. No, but for real, this was a decent fight night card, especially when you compare it to something like Marcin Tybora versus Sergey Spivak. But let's just jump right into it. First fight of the night, we have Wang Tong versus Victoria Leonardo. Wang Tong got a first-round KO, a brutal first-round KO. I mean, she was expected to win. This was an easy fight for her, to be quite honest. But she looked incredible. She was chopping at the legs, avoiding all the shots of Leonardo, and then perfectly sniped her with her right hand and literally put her out cold. And what's crazy about this performance is the women's flyweight division is decent, but it's not particularly stacked. So now with this brutal one-punch KO first round KO, early first round KO, she immediately inserts herself into basically the contender discussion at Flyway. I think she called out Casey O'Neill afterwards. From what I've seen of her before this fight, as well as what I've seen in this fight, I think she would beat Casey O'Neill. We'd have to see how her grappling held up, but I think that's a great call out. I think Casey O'Neill's currently ranked, which is just an absolute shame if you ask me to begin with, but great call out, great win. You don't, you very rarely see some of these lower women's weight class go out there and get a brutal KO. So for her to do that, I think she's going to stick in a lot of people's minds. And I think the UFC is going to kind of promote her. She gets on the mic afterwards and she says, you know, I should have been on the main card. I shouldn't have been buried on the prelims. First fight on the card. And she kind of proved it. I mean, a lot of these women's fights go to decisions. Some of them are boring. I mean, this would have been a better co-main event, to be quite honest. So she gets it done. First round KO. Can't wait to see what she does in the future. Next fight on the card. We have Jacqueline Calvacante versus Josiane Nunez. Somehow one judge scored it for Josiane Nunez, 30-27. Look, I mean, this fight was not super enthralling by any means. This was not fight of the night material. You know, what, to quote Dana White, wasn't a barn burner. Jacqueline Calvacante just avoided the big shots and just kind of sniped her and peppered her from the outside with a jab. And I think it was the right hand she was throwing. And she won. I thought she won every single round. Like... I mean, I wasn't like laser focused on the fight when I was watching it, but I thought she won every single round. She just moved. Nunez would kind of plot forward, throw big shots. I don't think there was any ever any grappling in this fight. And Calvacante was just sniping her with straight shots. Nobody was ever really rocked. Nobody was ever really busted up too bad. But Calvacante clearly won this fight with movement, straight shots, pumping the jab. Nunez wasn't even cutting her off. She was just following her. She wasn't sidestepping her to try to, you know, keep her within her striking range because Nunez, you know, doesn't have particularly long arms, doesn't have a particularly long reach, and she's getting peppered with that jab. She's just following right behind her, even in the small cage at the apex. And she clearly lost. She clearly got outstruck, and somehow one judge scores it 30-27 for Jossie and Nunez. Is Howie Booth in the building? What the hell are we doing? That's what I want to know. So, luckily, Calvacante gets it done via split decision. She should have won anyway, so she gets the job done. And she beats Jocelyn Nunes. Next fight on the card, we have Vicheslav Borsha versus James Yantop. Look, I enjoyed this fight. I enjoyed this fight. I had to go back and re-watch this fight because I actually missed it live. I was in the middle of something. But it was a competitive fight. This was another split decision. I don't hate this one. But one thing I do want to talk about. So, so basically, I had Borshov winning every single round. I thought third round was the closest round. I just thought Borshov landed the more powerful shots. Jan Top was landing some good heavy leg kicks. But I just thought Borshov just landed the heavier counter. It was usually a counter shot. Like in the first round, landed like a nasty uppercut counter as Jan Top rushed in. Um, early in the first, second round. Early in the first, second. I don't know why I keep saying first round. Early in the first minute of the second round is why I'm saying first. Uh, it looked like Yontop got hurt by Borshov. Then later on, he got hurt by a body shot in the second round. Clearly lost the second round. The only thing I can think of is the judge in round one, or a judge in round one gave it to Yontop based on the fact that he dropped him. But it was an eye poke that then Yontop chased him down and landed a right hand that looked like he kind of dropped him. But Tyone, this is what I really want to get into about this fight. So I thought Borshov clearly won. 30-27 or 29-28, depending on how you score the third round. But Tyone's, Tyone is known for this, okay? Chris Tyone. I hate this fucking ref. He does this all the time. I can't think of any examples right now. If you can think of any, 
Let me know down in the comments, but I've seen him do this before. I've called it out multiple times. Borshov gets eye poked, right? He starts holding his eye. I think it was his right eye. Starts holding his eye and kind of wading away. Tyone stands 15 foot back. He's like, stop, stop. He's not even getting close to him. And Yantop probably is not even hearing him, just rushing forward, throwing it like a right hand that drops him and starts almost following up on the ground before Tyone finally decides to get his fat ass in there. Okay? And I know someone inserted a joke about meet my weight down in the comments. Go ahead. If you're going to be a ref, get your ass in there. Move with the, Like, I know I criticize Mark Smith too, but at least he moves. He has some brisk footwork, okay? James Tyone does. I've seen him do it so many times. He'll stand way back. He did it recently, and I can't think of what fight it was. He'll stand 80 feet away and be like, all right, TKO, stop the fight. Like, like what? What the hell? I had to do that because I know that my arms are cut out, all right? With the way I'm doing this post fight. Tyone sucks ass, man. And I'm just sick and tired. Like, is anybody else, like, this is almost worthy of, like, a rant video. Is anyone else sick and tired of every fucking fight card? The judges are horrible and the refs are horrible. Is anyone else sick of that? Luckily, the refs weren't too bad tonight. But just sick of it. Disgust it. And imagine if something would actually happen and then this fight couldn't continue. Luckily, Borshov continues, gets up, continues, is okay. But Tyone's a fucking horrible ref, man. Horrible ref. I don't want to see him refing anymore. Borshov gets it done. Don't want to spend any more time on that. Next fight on the card. We have Zach Reese versus Jose Daniel Medina. Reese won via decision, unanimous decision. I don't know how you could have scored it for Medina, but you know, refs have, or the judges have been doing it earlier in the fight card. Reese beat the dog shit out of him. Hurt him badly multiple times in the first round. Nasty body kicks, sick ground and pound after a takedown. Nasty elbows that cut him open. And I really thought he might get him out of there, but he wasn't able to get him out of there. Medina survives. And then basically... Second and third round, Reese is kind of tired and slowing down, but he's still winning. Medina's kind of taunting a little bit on the feet, but still getting beat up, eating body shots. Third round was grapple heavy from Reese, but still did damage, was able to control him. Showed that, you know, I think this was a, kind of a growing fight for him because he showed that he could go a hard three rounds. And while he didn't look particularly great in the second and third, I don't believe he ever had been out of the first round. So to put out that type of output, we've seen UFC vets gas out after that type of output in the first round or second round. We'll talk about that later in the fight card. But yeah, I, I thought he did very well. Uh, looked Had a tight tight uh, guillotine choke in the first round, I believe it was, after Medina took him down. Or maybe that was the second round. I'm not 100% sure. But either way, Zach Reese absolutely dominated him, lit him up on the feet, lit him up in the grappling. Medina never really had much top control at all. And Reese just looked better in all aspects. And he was ripping to the body over and over and over again. And Zachary Reese is trying to erase that memory of that Cody Bumbage Batista bomb. That's what he's trying to do. But I think this was a, you know, overall great performance from him. Medina's not good, but he is tough. And uh, Reese got that three round experience tonight against a guy who's really durable. And Reese could have been one of those guys who blows his wad early in the first round and then gasses out and gets finished later on. You know, hint, hint, first fight on the main card. But yeah, he gets it done. Good win for Zachary Reese. Next fight on the card Dennis Bazooka versus. Francis Fire Marshall. Damn, Francis Marshall steps in on short notice, gets it done. Split decision. I don't think it should have been split decision, but I kind of understand why it was. Honestly, you could score all three rounds for Marshall, but the third round was rather close. Wasn't a lot of damage done in the third round. A little bit of grappling for Marshall at the tail end. Second round, Marshall hurt him badly with right hands. Almost finished him. But then Bazooka survived and then started battering him towards the end of that round. So I understand maybe the second round you could maybe give the Bazooka and then the third round was close. Maybe you could give it to him. But first round, clearly Marshall outgrappled in the majority of the round. Didn't do a whole lot of damage. Um, did a little bit of damage at the end, but had his back. Kind of had him down on one knee the majority of the first round. And then I think really it's just Marshall damaged him much more in that early flurry in the second round. More than Bazooka coming back and landing good flurries in the back half of the second round, which should have had Marshall winning that second round. And then the third round was just very competitive. Third round really could have went either way. Second round, maybe. So I don't think it's the worst decision ever, but great win from Francis Marshall. I remember I was high on him at one point, and I picked him against Isaac Dolgarian, if I'm not mistaken. And then once he got beat up by Dolgarian, I was like, you know what? He stepped in on short notice here. I'm going to pick Bazooka. I didn't really do a lot of tape study for that fight because it got announced right before I started recording my video. 
But overall, I think neither guy's stock really goes down. I think Marshall's stock actually goes up. But I don't believe it should have been a split decision. I think Francis and Marshall won this fight. Next fight on the card. First fight opening up the main card. Or not first fight, but you know what, I, you know what I'm trying to say here. Edmund Shabazi and Gerald Mearshart. <laughs> How many times has this happened to Shabazian, man? How many times? He gets finished by Gerald Mearshart. I mean, this is craziness. How does this happen to Mearshart? Oh, or not Mearshart. We're really Mearshart, too. But Shabazian gets finished second round arm triangle. I mean, first round Shabazian clearly won. Was lighting him up on the feet, landing good body kicks. You know, Mearshart was kind of leaning away from the more, you know, damaging shots. Like there was a head kick that landed that Mearshart was landing away from. There were some good elbows kind of in tight from Shabazian. Shabazian clearly won the first round. Clearly won the first round. There was a low blow late in the first round um, that I think it was caught Mearshart, if I'm not mistaken. And they, they were able to continue and had a breather there. And uh, yeah, I mean, Shabazian won the first round. Second round. Shabazian hurt him to the body and then landed a knee right afterwards, which kind of landed to the head and body. Then starts just smashing him on the ground. Could have been stopped, arguably. Smashing him on the ground. And as Gerald Mearshart's kind of getting to a hip and recovering a little bit, I'm like, oh my God. I said it on stream. I said Edmund Shabazian's going to get finished now. He's done this before. I can't think of which fights. Maybe it was an Anastardina Maval fight that this happened in. Derek Brunson, I think it kind of happened in the Derek Brunson fight. Shabazian used to be a top prospect, man. People used to say, oh, Shabazian's going to be up there, you know, towards the top of the division and a future middleweight title contender. And he gasses every single time. He gassed out. Once Gerald Mearshart's able to get back to his feet, survive the onslaught, Gerald Mearshart takes him down and literally immediately starts looking for the arm triangle. And Shabazian didn't even try to defend. You could see it coming from a mile away. He never tried to get the arm back. From behind uh, Mearshart's head. Because Mearshart just latched it up, man. And Gerald Mearshart. Man, I don't even know. Like, Gerald Mearshart looks so stuck in the mud. Looks so sluggish. But somehow he finds a way to get it done. And he beats old, old, old uh, Edmund Shabazian. Who hasn't been around for as long as Mearshart. Nowhere near as old as Gerald Mearshart. But the amount of damage he's taken in his UFC career is crazy. I think Edmund Shabazian is the tale of a guy who got into the UFC early. Very talented. And ended up paying for the hype. Because now he's taken so much damage. He's not really evolved in years. I mean, I'm telling you guys. I know a lot of you guys who maybe just started watching the last couple years. Last two, three years. You might not know it. I'm telling you, people thought Shabazian was a hot prospect. At one point, I believe he was in the top 15. Like maybe even like 13 or 12. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. People were looking at him. They were like, oh, he's going to beat Derek Brunson. And then he's like one fight away from a title. We're talking like 2019, 2020-ish. And now he's losing to Gerald Mearshart who's supposed to be kind of like a gatekeeper for like the top 25. <laughs> but Mearshart finds a way to get it done, man. Submits him in the second round via arm triangle. Next fight on the card. Neil Magny versus Michael Morales. Michael Morales wins via first round TKO. Great win for Morales. Neil Magny's son was at home clapping because Michael Morales actually put a beating on him. The shoe was on the other foot. I thought Neil Magny, you know, he's going to see Michael Morales, young 20-year-old, young kid. I thought Neil Magny was ready to break out the belt. But Michael Morales beat the dog shit out of Neil Magny. I mean, it was a bad, bad beating. First round KO. Was smashing his legs early. I don't know what was on Neil Magny, the back of Neil Magny's right leg. But it looked contagious. It looked like there was some broccoli hiding underneath his skin. Now, I don't want to make fun of that or I don't know what it is because it could be a medical condition. Somebody said it could be like a veins issue with his veins or what. But it didn't look good. I don't know if that's from taking so many leg kicks in the past or what it, what it could it be from. But I noticed that. Looks to get the takedown. Gets in on a good shot. Kind of controls the back position for a while because Morales gives up his back up against the fence. But is never really able to do anything with it. Like he's in position. He's low. He's got a good grip. But Morales is just kind of fighting, digging underhooks, and, and, and avoiding being taken down by Neil Magny. Eventually, they're in the clinch. And Neil Magny lets go of the grip and starts throwing some, I think it was left hands. And Morales finally used this opportunity to throw a spinning back fist. Or no, a spinning back elbow, I believe it was, that landed and hurt Neil Magny badly, man. And then basically, Neil Magny on the ground, I think he got up, got shucked back down, kind of got it halfway up. And then uh, Morales basically jumped in the full mount. Ended up, Neil Magny ended up getting flattened out and just pounded out, man. It, it went on for even longer than it probably should have. It was 
a nasty KO. I mean, he at one point he was seated. Neil Magny was seated up against the fence, and Morales was full mounted, landed nasty shots. Then Magny, you know, tried to shake him off the top, and he was on top of him, a high mount, dick and balls all in Neil Magny's face, just smashing him. Then Neil Magny, I think it was twice, gave up his back, completely flattened out like a child. I mean, it was like Morales was fighting a kid, and Morales just boom, boom, just wrecking him on the ground, flattened out. Finally, the referee says, I've seen enough. That's enough. And pulls Michael Morales off. Good win for Michael Morales. I mean, he could have ended up like Mike Malott, which is one of the funniest fights of all time. Uh, but yeah, Neil Magny isn't what he used to be. He's getting older. He's getting slower. And it's time for these young whippersnappers to make their way up. And Michael Morales beats Neil Magny. Probably going to end up being ranked around 15 now in the welterweight division. Good win for Michael Morales. And absolutely dominant win from Michael Morales. So he's happy he didn't suffer the same fate as Mike Malott. So Michael Morales gets it done. First round dominant TKO. Next fight on the card. I know I'm going to mispronounce this because I don't remember. Khan Ofley versus Maron Santos. Or Santos. Santos absolutely destroyed him. Absolutely destroyed him. Second round TKO. First round Santos looked so clean on the feet. Landing... You know, nice straight shots, landing good leg kicks. Ofley tried to clinch up, didn't really have any success. And, uh, I mean, it was a clear first round for Santos, landing to the body, avoiding the clinch. When Ofley did clinch up, he would shuck him off like he was clearly stronger and clearly won the first round. Then the second round, Ofley's just rushing in. And I believe it was a right hand to the forehead and then a left hand to the chin. It was early second round, minute 30 seconds in the second round. It was a right hand to the forehead, left hand right to the chin. And Ofley dropped to his knees, basically brutally KO'd. He looked like Michael Chandler when the UFC calls him up and says, look, you're not waiting for Conor McGregor anymore, okay? We know you left your family in January. We're not going to have you wait for Conor McGregor anymore. You're fighting Benoit Saint-Denis. And that's what Ofley looked like. He dropped to his knees. Why? And uh, Santos follows up with a couple good shots, which he really didn't need to. And the referee finally jumps in. Santos looked clean, man. He looked really clean. Great leg kicks, great body work, slamming nasty body kicks and head kicks. And looked so clean on the feet. Looked good with his movement. Looked good avoiding the clinch. Good in and out movement as well. And absolutely dominated this fight. I don't think he got a performance of the night, which is an injustice if you ask me. He should have got a performance. But I could be wrong with that. I'm not looking at that right now. But yeah, great win from Marion Santos. And absolutely destroyed him. I mean, put him in the... And then after he fell out, he was in the doggy style position. <laughs> he put him in the... He put... Dude had his... Oh, my God. It was a bad K. I would change my entire identity and move to a different country if I got KO'd like Oafly. So thank you to these guys for going out there and put their health and chins on the line. Because I'll be damned if I'll be on live TV being put in the doggy style position by another grown man. Okay. I know that's something probably Sean Strickland's into, but not particularly me. Great win from Santos. Brutal KO by Santos. Flawless performance by Santos. I can't say enough good things about Santos' performance. Next fight on the card. Featured fight on the card. We have Robert Valentine versus Ryan Loader. Ryan Loader won second round TKO. Great performance. I mean, first round, Loader got an easy takedown. Worked to side control. Was looking for like a weird submission where it was like kind of an arm bar. I'm not sure exactly what it was called. Someone was telling me that was like a reverse omoplata or something. I don't even know. I got to go back and check it out. Because I didn't even realize what was going on in real time. Okay. But he had, you know, almost like a modified crucifix position that was kind of an arm bar. And he gets reversed. He ends up giving up his back. Valentine ends up on his back looking for a rear naked choke. Flattens him out multiple times. Eventually, Lauder gets two on one. There's multiple times where it looks like maybe the rear naked choke could be deep. You can't really get a good angle on it with the camera angle, but it's not looking great. And, you know, Valentine, his kind of, you know, mannerisms was looking like he was locking it up. And then at one point, he did get underneath the chin, but Loader, when you could actually see it, and then Loader fought off the hands. Eventually, Loader gets two on one, reverses position, uses his hips, and just turns into the body triangle, ends up on top, does a little bit of damage there. And uh, I thought he clearly won the first round. I mean, is being saying, oh, well, what about the submission attempts? No. Loader clearly won the first round. And supposedly that submission attempt, that like weird arm bar thing, hurt Valentine. Okay. Apparently that hurt his arm. Second round, 
Clinch turn loader, easy takedown, got him in the crucifix, starts just slamming elbows down. And honestly, it could have been stopped earlier. He was getting smashed in the crucifix position. He had nothing to offer. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was a bad beatdown. What's crazy is Valentine was so much bigger. I think he used to fight up a weight class. And I think this is going to be one of these, you know, ultimate fighter finales where like Loader probably moves down to welterweight and Valentine's like a bigger middleweight. But yeah, Loader got it done. Impressive performance. And happy to see because if you guys didn't know, we're relatives. Look, I mean, look, he's, we got similar beards, similar builds as well. He had a little bit more hair on the chest. We, we have the exact same body type. And then he shouts me out in the post-fight interview. Shouts me out in the post-fight interview. So I'm happy Ryan Loader won. I picked him to win. I picked him by second-round KO. I picked him to win with his grappling. And very, very impressive performance. And I think he's probably going to move down to welterweight. I think he's kind of small for the middleweight weight class. So great win. Next fight on the card, the co-main event. The most anticipated fight on the card, Angela Hill versus Tabitha Ricci. Tabitha Ricci wins via unanimous decision. Look, has any fighter been robbed more than Angela Hill? I think this was a robbery, to be quite honest. I had to go back and really rewatch it because there's a lot of punch in it there. Tabitha Ricci won the first round. Super aggressive, landing some shots. Hill was backing up a lot. Second round, it was a close round. Richie had two takedowns, but didn't do anything with it. Hill got right back up. There was like maybe an illegal kick from Tabitha Richie off a takedown attempt, and then Hill kicked her off and got back up. And Hill even landed a couple up kicks as well. And then Richie threw like a head kick almost while Hill was on the ground, but there was no complaints. I thought Hill landed more strikes in the second round. I thought she did more damage in the second round. And I thought takedowns were absolutely nothing. I thought Hill won the second round. Then you have the third round, where the commentary team's acting like it's a war, acting like it's competitive. And don't get me wrong, both were swinging at a lot of air. I don't know if Richie landed one fucking shot. She was swinging and missing every single shot. I remember we were midway through the through the third round, and I said that might have been the first shot she landed. It was like a glancing jab. Hill was landing. Was it 50%? Maybe. Was it 70%? Maybe. But she was landing, okay? Hill clearly won the third round. Therefore, I thought she should have got a 29-28. But, of course, Tabitha Richie who her boyfriend is, you know, the boxing, you know, fighter that Dana White's involved with. And somehow, Angela Hill, who made a career off getting robbed in split decisions, now has one of the worst records of all time. Of course, you can't see her record on here. I want to see her record. She's lost now like 14 fights, I think. I wish I could see her record. Of course, it doesn't show you here. But yeah, I thought Angela Hill got done dirty again. I'd be pissed if I was Angela Hill. Richie wasn't landing outside of the first round. She really wasn't landing. Go back and watch it. I implore you. Because I know someone's going to be down in the comments. Below. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Richie was landing. No, she wasn't. And by the way, why are we having Angela Hill in co-main events in 2024? I'm up. I'm up. I'm so embarrassed in my life right now. I'm up at damn near 3 a.m. Talking about Angela Hill, Tabitha Richie in a co-main event. Basically for free in my in my spare time. Damn, I got to reevaluate my life. I got to reevaluate my life. This is uh, this is alcohol. This isn't water. I'll take a drink mid mid video because I'm just I'm actually ashamed of myself right now. And then maybe I need to do something else with my spare time. But yeah, Angela Hill gets robbed yet again. Tabitha Ritchie, all the simp boys are so happy. Tabitha Ritchie gets it done. So let's talk about the main event. Best fight on the card. Definitely fight of the night. Jarrett Cannonier versus Kyle Borjalio. Listen, I don't care what the commentary team says. By the way, Kyle Borjalio wins via decision. I think it was 249-46 is 148-47. I don't care what the commentary team says. I don't care what the fans say. Kyle Borjalio or Borjalio put on a masterclass performance. This was not some war. This was not some super close competitive fight. I don't care what anyone says. Even, you know, I'll go through my scores in a second. This was a master class for Brahalio. And this should have been a fifth round TKO. Let's just get that right out of the way. It was a fifth round TKO, that big damn Mergliata. I don't know. Maybe Tabitha Ritchie was shaking her ass outside the cage and he got, you know, started staring at that instead. It should have been stopped in the fifth round. But let's go through it round by round. Kyle Baraglio, masterclass performance, limited to no grappling, only a little bit of grappling in the fifth round. But 
early on first round, landing the jab, landing good shots, good knees to the body, hard leg kicks in the first round that takes Jared Kennedy off balance, one that took him like down to a knee, and Kennedy's just blitzing in with big hooks, basically. Caio Baraglio clearly won the first round. Second round was a close round. There was a weird moment where like looked like maybe Cannonier hurt him, but then he was kind of wiping his feet on the mat, and there was multiple times throughout the fight that people were slipping kind of in a similar location as Barajalio. So I'm not 100% sure, but Barajalio's output was a little bit lessened in the second round, even though he was landing, and then Cannonier was throwing these big shots that weren't really landing all that much, and then Barajalio only threw like one or two leg kicks in the second round. So I thought the second round could have went to Cannonier. But it felt like a round where really nothing happened. That's what it felt like. Third round, Kayo clearly won. Jabs, combinations, ripping to the body, nasty leg kicks. Kennedy's just throwing bombs that aren't landing. And then at one point, Kayo hurts him with a straight left, which I believe is the same shot that hurt him in the, in the fifth round as well. And then just starts chasing him down, beating him up for the last 45 seconds. Clearly, Berhalio wins the third round. Fourth round, I actually rewatched that immediately after the fight was over because I was curious. Okay. You know, everyone's kind of acting like maybe Cannonier won the fourth. Commentary team's acting like it's such a close competitive fight. I went back and watched the fourth round. I have it clearly for Brahalio. I have it clearly for Brahalio. And I know people are going to be like, damage, 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 damage. What about the damage, Joey? There was damage underneath the right eye of Brahalio from like a punch that landed in the second round. And then when Cannonier landed one in the, you know, um, in the fourth round, it really busted it wide open. But if you go back and watch the round, I mean, Berhalio was winning the majority of it before the cut. He won the majority of it after the cut. And Cannonier landed like two or three big shots in the entire round. You rewatch that fourth round, it's clearly Berhalio. And I guess some of the... I haven't looked at the scorecards for this fight because I didn't think it really mattered. But Berhalio clearly won the fourth round, in my opinion. But he, even so, it doesn't matter. Because fifth round was a 10-8. Should have been a 10-8. I don't even know. Do the judges not give a 10 8? I don't know. I have to go check out the scorecards. But fifth round, Berhalio landing early, landing often. I don't think Cannonier ever got any shots off. Hurts him with like a straight left that basically KOs him, slumps him out. Um, kind of like a Shane Burgos SKO, a little bit delayed, but not as delayed as Shane Burgos. Falls over to the ground. Caillou gets on top of him, starts smashing him with ground and pound, brutal elbows, brutal punches, and then kind of gets tired out because Dan Mergliata is like, oh, I'm not stopping it. No, nah, I'm not going to stop it. I'll tell you right now, if you cried about the stoppage for Nasruddin Mavov, Big Dan paid him back tenfold. Big Dan was like, I'm not having the fans complain at me. Jared Kennedy lost about five, ten years of his life from Caio Baraglio in the fifth round. Got absolutely decimated, destroyed. Then Baraglio, that's how you, I think you pronounce his name, starts looking for an arm triangle up against the fence. There's a sick angle from the top position coming down where literally Jared Kennedy looked like a dead body. Literally looked like he was dead. He's giving the thumbs up. I thought for a second he made it, maybe went out because he wasn't defending at all. He was just laying on his back there accepting it, similar to how maybe Michael Chandler would against Conor McGregor in a potential fight. And uh, survives that. And then get, I think he gets up maybe like the last 10 seconds and then nothing really happens. But I will say this. This was an absolute masterclass from Brahalio. You know, I don't want to... I don't even want to hear anything else. This wasn't a war. This wasn't a super competitive fight. That nasty cut that got opened up in the fourth round was sick. It was filthy. That's really the only success you had from Cannoneer in this fight. Berhalio never even shot in on a takedown. Never shot in on a takedown. He fainted like one or two. Snapped his head back with multiple jabs. Was beating up his legs. Was landing big shots. Even before the shot that really hurt him in the fifth, he landed like a nasty check right hook. Was super defensively responsible. Berhalio... Could beat anyone in the middleweight division. I can't wait to see him against like the Nasruddin Mavovs or, you know, the Sean Stricklands or the Drikus Duplessis. I believe he called out Drikus Duplessis or the Israel Adesanyas because he didn't even use his grappling. And I'll tell you this as well. I'm starting to believe Mikhaev when he said, the UFC told me not to shoot takedowns. Because Brahalio, while he's not just a heavy grappler, the fact that he didn't shoot one takedown, then afterwards he's like, I'm not a grappler. Like he had a chip on his shoulder. Like the matchmakers gave him shit for grappling in the past. You know, I know he slumped out Paul Craig. He should have had a fifth round TKO over Jared Cannonier. So great performance from Bahalio. Jared Cannonier is done, man. It's done. I picked Bahalio by TKO. I thought he was going to finish him third round TKO, which got eerily close to actually happening. But man, Cannonier took a lot of damage in this fight. 
And I just don't know at 40 years old in the middleweight division, he might be on a head back up to heavyweight where it's an absolute dog shit division. But Kyle Barraglio gets it done. Great win. Masterclass performance. I'll tell you this. Barraglio, he's got a dark side to him. I think, honestly, after watching this performance, what he did, I think he might have two German Shepherds. He may even shoot guns. He may smack spray paint cans out of teenagers' hands who were trying to deface public property. That's how good he looked tonight. Okay? So, Brahalio gets it done. Let me know what you guys thought of the fight card. Overall, I enjoyed the fight card. I don't even know how I did on picks, honestly. Let me see if I can see here. Of course. Of course, it's not telling me. Okay. I went 7 out of 11. I should have went 8 out of 11 because uh, the Hill fight screwed me over. But that's irrelevant. Doesn't matter. Don't care that much. Let me know what you guys think. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for watching.